Good morning, reptilians. Welcome and welcome back to the channel. I'm Elle and this is Sterling and this is Elle's Reptiles. This week we are doing a video that I actually mentioned that I was doing in last week's video and that is building a bioactive tank for my red-eyed crocodile skink, Cersei. We have had Cersei for about three years now and if you've been following our journey with her, she started off in a really cool, really big tank. It leaked and then we ended up moving her to a temporary bin. In that bin, she was super active. She was climbing, she was moving around. So we kind of started sizing her up. We sized her up to this current size bin. It took a little bit longer for her to actually get used to the space, but now we are ready to get her into a bioactive setup. Lots of plants, sides and back are going to be covered so hopefully she'll feel secure and she's going to have a waterfall again because that was her favorite part of that first tank was the water feature. This week's video is sponsored by Pod Solo. This is a new sponsor for us. This is actually someone who sponsored the Snake Discovery build off and reached out to me when they saw that I was building a bioactive crocodile skink tank and I'm super excited to work with them because their stuff is really cool. So I will be mentioning them a lot in this video. Without further ado, let's get started. So the starting footage of this tank looks like we've already done a lot, but we actually didn't do that much at this point. The whole main back piece is a piece from Animal Tracks. It looks a lot like Universal Rocks, but it's not Universal Rocks brand. I'm not really sure what the brand is, but that was the basically main center piece, the starting piece of this tank. So we didn't have to do as much work as we usually do building the entire background. We are just putting that into place with spray foam. And then we are building the waterfall. The waterfall pieces, the pump, the cords, all of that is from Josh's Frog their waterfall kit, the spray foam and everything comes in that too. This is the first time we ever built a waterfall and we were pretty nervous about it, but it's pretty straightforward. You have the basin that holds the water. In this case, we used a dog bowl as opposed to the pond liner that Josh's frogs provided just because we felt like it'd be easier for cleanup. We use this dragon stone for the background. So basically we took the pump that Josh's frogs gave us. We ran both of the cords up. We spray foamed the cords and the the dragon stone into place around the tube at the top and that top tube is where the water is going to come out of then it's a submersible pump so the water just recycles it comes out of the basin up the pump and back again over and over again very intimidating but once you actually do it it is super easy and we absolutely love the way it came out we covered the side walls with the spray foam I definitely should have turned the tank on the side to do this because it just kept falling off but I don't know why I do what I do Anyways, we got there, we got it. We also got this really cool piece of wood, I think also from Petco or PetSmart. And really love that. We had to trim it down a little bit, but it is gonna provide a really cool climbing area for her if, if she ever gets out of her hide, because when she does get out of her hide, she likes to climb. Those little rocks you see on the sides in the spray foam are from Universal Rocks. That is a piece that comes with the Josh's Frogs waterfall kit. This isn't sponsored by Josh's Frogs. This is just where I got things from. And as always, we are gonna use black silicone over the spray foam after trimming it down really good. This is going to seal the spray foam in and make sure that it is waterproof. We're also going to, if you've seen all my other building background videos, you know that next we are also going to just kind of shove dry cocoa fiber into the silicone to make a really naturalistic looking wall. In order for the cocoa fiber to properly stick to the silicone, this part needs to be done in small sections and quickly because if that silicone dries before you can push the cocoa fiber into it, it's not gonna stick correctly. I highly suggest wearing gloves because silicone does not ever wanna come off. Like it's so hard to get it off of your skin and it's sticky and gross. I also highly suggest using the black silicone as opposed to the clear just because sometimes in some spots the cocoa fiber doesn't stick the best and so in those spots you can't really tell as much if you're using black silicone as opposed to a bunch of white spots if you were using the clear silicone. Then we're just getting all that excess dirt off of the sides and vacuuming everything out once it was all ready to go. There was this weird spot in the front where you could see spray foam and I didn't know what to do because I couldn't get silicone back there. So I had this background that I had got for this tank just in case and I just kind of cut a piece off and shoved it over there and it kind of made a cool little effect like a tree. Next up, we're doing the drainage layer. Drainage layer, as always, is Hydro Balls. I mean, I say as always, sometimes I use pebbles, but this time we're using Hydro Balls. <laughs> the drainage layer basically is going to aerate the soil, keep the soil from getting all moldy and mildewy, and also keep water off of the roots to keep the soil from turning into mud, basically. Then on top of that is the substrate barrier that's just gonna keep the dirt and the substrate and the drainage layer from mixing and allow the water to be able to go down in that drainage layer. 
for the substrate, we are using this organic topsoil cocoa fiber mixture. And then on top of that, we are using BioShot from the BioDude. I've been using this topsoil for a long time and I got comments in the last video saying it wasn't good, like it wasn't gonna grow anything. This is the same thing I use in my Crested Gecko and Girl Gecko's tanks and the Pothos and stuff in there grow fantastically. And Dracaena, they all grow fantastically in that tank. So this is what we're using. And of course we need the things to go into the tank. And like I said, at the beginning of this video, this video is sponsored by Pod Solo, who is a sponsor on Snake Discovery. So happy to be working with them again. Let's unbox the things that they sent to me. All right, what do we have? Oh, there's a box in a box. Oh, a rabbit's foot fern. This makes me really happy because I killed the last one. Just think of the million. Oh, this is actually really cool. Sorry, what? Just think of the guy that got rich on just for like having the idea of, I'm gonna put air in a bag and sell it. Yeah. That is awesome. Mood moss. Bromeliad. Oh. This is the biggest bromeliad I've ever had. <laughs> the leaf litter. These are giant leaves. Purple Prince Wondering Jew. I don't think it likes this bag very much. This is probably the isopods. Ah! Stickers! <laughs> oh, that's cool. I like that zebra one. Oh, you can't see them. Here. Oh my god, I love stickers. A spider? That's a jumping spider! Pod Solo. Shall we get? There's so many in there. 30. Uh, PP Oreo Crumble. Beautiful. Dwarf Pods. Carefully pour out everything contained into enclosure. Springtails. The starter shot. That's cool. So I can just dump this whole thing in there. And another Springtails. And now we're gonna fill up this tank. First, we are putting a pothos in here. This pothos looks dead, but it isn't. <laughs> I bought a giant hanging basket from Home Depot because Home Depot was selling a bunch of plants for really cheap because it's getting very cold here. Look how healthy this thing is. I think I just happened to grab one of the vines that was hanging down, so it's kind of just flipped upside down. This is what happens when you go and try to buy a giant cheap hanging basket for plants. Next, we are adding in this really cool purple passion plant. I love this so much. Just look at those leaves. It's so pretty. And then in the light, it looks like there's glitter in the leaves. I love this so much. It was kind of droopy when I first got it because shipping plants are going to look a little droopy when you first get them because they haven't had light in several days. But when I got it in this tank, it perked right up. Then we have the biggest bromeliad that I've ever owned. You can see again there the difference between very first getting it and it perking up after a few days. It's opened up and already looks better. I've never successfully grown a bromeliad. So far so good, but it's kind of nerve wracking for me. I've tried growing it directly in cork bark. I've tried growing it in the ground. This time we're growing it in a side planter in moss and we'll see how that goes. We also added in some philodendron again from one of those giant cheap hanging baskets and it perked up better too. So ignore that. And then we have some mood moss. This is really cool. I've never put these like pillowy fluffy mosses into a tank and it was so soft and I love it so much. I'm so excited about it. We also have these botanicals from Pod Solo. Look at that little wasp nest thing. They're so cool. We put a couple of these in our snake discovery tank and it's never occurred to me that you could put these things in tanks, but of course you can because they're in the forest. <laughs> so cool the isopods immediately go to these things when i put them in they love them you can also see that there's another type of moss in this tank i ended up taking most of that out i didn't like it but i did end up replacing it with a different more fluffy kind of moss to match the mood moss a little better we do have two springtail cultures and two containers of the dwarf isopods you can see them crawling around in there. I like these because they are in a substrate or a moss already. So you just dump the whole thing in there instead of trying to pour springtails off into the tank. We also have these Oreo crumble isopods. These guys are so active. They are so cute and so active. As the tank was rooting, I would just go and peek into this tank and I would just see isopods just exploring. Super cute.
As for heating, the side of this tank looks terrible. I need to put some kind of black poster board or something on there because all you see is foam. But we are using a heat pad with a thermostat on the side of the tank. In that back little cave, you can see that we kind of made her a cave out of dragon stone and the stone background for her to hide in. But yeah, this is the finished tank. Look at that waterfall. We did it. We built a waterfall. We were so nervous about it, but we did it. Love the way the water looks falling over that dragon stone. This tank is heavy. Dragon stone is heavy, but I love the way this turned out so much. And in goes the crocodile skink. You can see her bin here. We had to take everything out so that we could get to her because she kept running and hiding. This is my beautiful Cersei. And of course, after that, she was nowhere to be found. And that is it. I am happy with the way her tank turned out. That waterfall is super cool. We were super worried about the waterfall, but we got it. Thank you so much again to Pod Solo for sponsoring this video. Make sure to use this code to save 5% off of your order with them. And he has a YouTube channel if you guys want to check that out too, where he talks about isopods and spiders and all of that cool stuff. Thank you so much to Pod Solo for sponsoring the video. You're awesome. If you have not already, please feel free to follow me on my socials and like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications every single time about a new video, which is every Sunday and some. Wednesdays. This week's Instagram shout out is here and this week's subscriber shout out is here since I am doing this way in advance. Thank you guys both so much for watching and being super supportive. You are the bee's knees. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye. Bye.